Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Valheim video. So in this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to summon the final boss. Just a very detailed guide on what you need to clear the fooling camps easier, what I use, and just strategies on clearing them out and finding the totems easier. So to summon Yagloth, the final boss, if you guys just came to figure out how, you need five fooling totems and you get those at fooling camps. You put them on his altar, which you find in the plains. Boom, he comes up, you kill him, and that's it. Um, but if you want a really detailed guide on what I use, you know, how many arrows I recommend, um, etc., what weapons, food I ate, if you guys want a guide on that, stick around and we're going to get right into it, guys, and make this a lot easier for you guys. If this video got, helped you guys out in any type of way, please drop a like or a sub. I really appreciate it, guys. It's free, it goes a long way. And let's get straight into it. All right, so the first thing we're going to go over, guys, is going to be the foods I ate, um, what I use. So the most important thing here is going to be stamina. With stamina, you can avoid not getting hit, not getting hurt for a long time. So whatever foods you guys are eating right now to get your stamina as high as possible is what I recommend. Um, me personally, I took in the carrot soup. I took in sausages and I took in queen's jam. And you're going to need a, a fermenter, guys, because what I did was I made the stamina mead. It's really important that you guys have that because in the case that you don't manage your stamina properly, and it's really easy to do, guys. You're going to be firing arrows off. It's really easy to do. With the stamina mead, you consume that, and it'll help your stamina come back a lot, a lot faster, and it'll keep you alive longer, keep you in combat longer. So make sure you guys have a stamina mead. And those are the foods I took in. I mean, you can make different foods. You can go look at which ones give you the most stamina um which ones help you out the most which ones you're already crafting if you're making uh radish or whatever they're called um depending on what foods you're like making and stuff is going to determine what kind of food you take into the fight but that's what i took in those are really easy recipes for me and yeah guys let's get into armor so as far as the armor goes i'm wearing full wolf armor i also have it upgraded to max now there is iron armor and it's only six armor base low below six base armor below wolf armor so the iron armor isn't too bad guys if you have it fully maxed out already and you don't want to go into like going and getting wolf armor you need chains for wolf armor if you don't want to go into doing all that then the iron armor should suffice but if you're if you're dying a lot of course go and get wolf armor guys i have wolf armor maxed out um you should have your armor maxed out at this point before you like take this on unless you like really just want to be banging your head against the screen because you keep dying or whatever um don't don't even bother wasting your time guys these things really do hurt even with full wolf armor um uh, while i was making this guide on the second camp i got beat up pretty bad so um it, it's difficult guys but you can do it with the wolf armor there is a higher armor i'm not going to spoil nothing um there is a higher armor you could make so if you have that armor then shit you're doing better than me so make sure you guys at least have full wolf armor on um if not wolf armor try to get the iron armor maxed out um whatever you take into this stuff into these fights guys make sure they're maxed out because once you get to this point you're pretty much at end game so make sure that your armors are maxed out you know your weapons are going to be maxed out and that's pretty much it for the armor guys let's go ahead and get into the weapons all right, so one really important things for the weapons is mainly we're going to be using a bow. So what you want to do is max out the skill level of the bow because the higher the skill level of the bow, the faster you draw the arrow and the less stamina you consume. Very, very important, guys. You can literally spam arrows when you have it maxed out. You can do this numer numerous ways. Just go max out your stamina with food. Get a bunch of wood arrows and just go shoot trees and animals and really, really get your bow as high as you can, guys. It's really important. Another thing I brought that's not really a weapon is ooze bombs. Um, they just apply a poison cloud to an area. They're really, really good against death mosquitoes. And they're really good at just doing some damage to enemies if you're trying to like kite them around if they get grouped up. Um, not necessary, but like I said, they're really, really good, especially if a few Death Skeetos get in. Um, they're really effective against Death Skeetos, so if you guys can craft some Ooze Bombs, take them in. So as far as the weapons go, guys, you really don't need a sword and a shield and an axe. Like, if you want to bring all that stuff, it's good. But the strategy I use is just going to be utilizing the Frostner Hammer, which you get that from buying Emir's Flesh from the Merchant. And then you need the materials to craft it, of course. And I upgraded that to max... I'm sure by now you guys have hella gold, so 
pretty much not something you got to worry about. Just probably finding the merchants, the hardest part for most people. The Frostner Hammer is our secondary weapon. Our main weapon is going to be the Drogner Bow, the Draugr Bow. So the Draugr Fang Bow, it has 47 pierce and 5 poison, which is higher than Finewood, which has 32 pierce and no poison, of course, but it has block power. Now to craft the Draugr Fang Bow, and this is where like most people might not have, have even known this bow exists. It's, you need to go to the swamp and in the trees, there's these big green glowing bubbles. You need to hit those bubbles with a pickaxe. It's going to drop some stuff called guck. You need 10 guck to craft one Draugr Fang Bow. So you're going to need to farm a lot of that stuff to get it uh, leveled up and everything. So make sure that you guys try to take in the Draugr Fang Bow. I mean, if you can't, it's it's not the biggest deal in the world. You can use the Fine Wood Bow. Um, you're going to do a lot of kiting and like staying away from enemies as much as possible, prioritizing enemies here. So you're not going to be in combat the whole entire time to the point where without the highest bow it's going to make the hugest difference but if you can guys please like just take the extra time to get the jogger fang bow it does a lot of damage it looks cool as hell and that's pretty much it for the weapons guys the frostner hammer slows enemies down when you hit them and that's just going to be used utilized if you're like in emergency situation you're trying to run away um you need to get the enemies off of you when you hit them it'll slow them down give you time to run away a little bit and yeah guys as far as the arrows go for the bow now this is really important guys you're going to want to take in the needle arrows now to craft these is might be kind of annoying to get at first but once you got a few of them the rest of them will come really easy so you're going to need to kill deaf skeetos so it takes four needles and two feathers every time you kill a deaf skeeto you get one needle the alternate way of getting these guys is by clearing fooling caps so when you clear the fooling caps, there's going to be a shitload of chests in them. You can grab needles out of those chests. And those are really the only two ways to get them. So if you're like wondering what needles should you use to get, I mean, what arrows should you use to get these needle arrows? Um, I'm either going to recommend the obsidian arrows or the silver arrows. Um, other than that, guys, just try to get the, the needle arrows. They're really easy to get. Like once you start clearing a few camps, you'll have a bunch of them. And you're going to need about 50 to 60 needle arrows per fooling camp, guys. Very, very important. If you go in with any less, you probably will run out and you probably will get fucked up. Unless you're like landing every headshot, every shot's not missing. You really want to take in around 50 to 60 arrows just to be safe. Alright guys, so finally let's get into the strategy we're going to use to clear out these camps. So first things first guys, what I like to do before I go to any of these camps is make a bed nearby and put it as my spawn point because it's really easy to get overrun when you're fighting these fooling camps and it's really easy to die guys. So in case of a mistake, try to have a bed nearby. I mean if you don't then it's just going to be a long travel for you unless your house is nearby. Um, it's not hard to make a bed guys. All you need is a crafting station, some wood, and that's it. Like, just go ahead and make the bed, guys. Take the extra time out to make sure you're safe and you're not wasting time. If you're trying to clear these as fast as possible, I mean, if you'd like traveling and dying and uh, that's your thing, then, man, I mean, all, all, by all means, go for it. So, make sure you guys have a bed nearby. So, to find these fooling camps, they're always going to be inside of the planes. And most of the time, they'll have, like, big fire camps coming out of them. Um, they're really hard to miss guys. You probably have seen them multiple times. They're really hard to miss So once you find your first one make sure that it's not nighttime because the enemies do seem to be a little more difficult at night Make sure you guys fight them in the daytime Make sure that your armor is maxed out your weapons are maxed out. You got your food You got your arrows at least 60 like I said um, and everything's just ready to go guys Once you got all of that ready you want to go ahead and start taking on the camp. So when you get to the camp, there's a few different enemy types. You got the ranged fullins, you got the sword and shield fullins, you got the big ass fullins, and you got the shaman fullins. So you need to prioritize enemies when you take on these camps. You can't just go in and start hitting everything. You do not want to take out the big guys first. They are super slow. When they get near you, they will swing at you. You can back, like, just walk back away from it. Um, they have a three-hit chain. Sometimes, sometimes they'll hit once. Sometimes they'll hit three times. And when they yell, you have a brief window to hit them. Without them, they're not going to hit you back or nothing. Hit them maybe twice or three times, and then back off. Um, as for the little enemies, which ones you prioritize first? The first enemies you want to kill with your bow are going to be the ones that throw things at you. 
Um, these these archers, they'll like throw spears at you and shit. They'll hit they'll hit you three times and kill you. So very important that you guys just kite around the melee ones and kill the range ones first. After you kill the range ones, you guys need to focus down the shamans. Um, most of the time, they're not as aggressive as the other ones unless you get like really close to them. With the shamans, they put a shield up that blocks damage from all the other enemies around them. Um, these things have to die, like, either first or second. If you guys are having more problems with the shaman, kill it first. If it's shielding the ranged, kill them first. Um, the shamans also can shoot this fucking orb at you. It does a shit ton of damage. They're really, really annoying, guys. Make sure you guys kill the shamans first. And after you kill the shamans and the rangers, make sure you guys kill the sword ones. And then kill the big dudes last, guys. They're really easy to deal with. They're probably easier than the sword ones, as long as you're not getting hit. Um, you're staying back. You're not running out of stamina. So during all these fights, guys, this is when the mead comes into play. So let's say you're fighting. Boom, boom, boom. You're not paying attention to your stamina and you run out of stamina. If you run out of stamina, that's when you want to have the mead on your hot bar. So you can just consume it real quick. It'll regenerate your stamina super quick. And you'll be right back in the fight. You'll be back to kiting enemies around. And that's really all there is to it, guys. Um, once you killed everything in the camp... Go ahead and loop all the chests, get the needles out, whatever's in there that you need, get it out. And go ahead and find the totem. So the totem is really hard to miss, guys. It'll probably be by the fire. Um, some camps will not have a totem. Actually, a lot of them will not have a totem. Uh, what I would do is I would sneak around, try not to track the enemies. And if I didn't see a totem, I wouldn't even take on the camp. So once you find the totem, guys, go ahead and pick it up. And make sure you guys check the surrounding structures around the fulling camp. This is very important. Some of them have an extra little rock structure with a flag and a fulling in it. And these will sometimes have a totem inside of it. In this video, you can see, I'll show, I'll put it on the background. I found one really nearby and it had a totem in it. So with this one clear, I was able to get two totems out of it. So make sure you guys check for those. So it'll save you so much time, guys, just finding one of those. And that's pretty much it, guys. If this video helped you guys out in any type of way, um, please, if you guys have any questions, drop a comment, drop a like on the video, guys, drop a sub. I appreciate everything, guys, and y'all have a wonderful day in Valheim. Peace out.